how are those farmers farming sustainably, more so preserving the soils in which they're farming in? Yes, so we do run, we run uh, programs nationally. So, um, but in the Western Cape, we have a long-standing initiative with the wine industry. to the Private Property Farming Podcast. My name is Mbali Nwoko, your host, every Tuesdays and Thursdays right here on the Private Property Channel. Thank you so much for joining us um, wherever you're watching us. That could be Facebook, Instagram Live, YouTube, or Twitter. Um, keep following us on our social media pages because the podcast is right here for you. We discuss all topics related to agriculture, whether you're a farmer, a professional in the agricultural industry, or just someone who just wants to hear about what farmers do and what this industry about, is about, I definitely know that the Farming Podcast is where you need to be. Today's topic is all about soil health and regenerative agriculture. Quite interesting terms, and um, they've been thrown around of late, obviously, with the words or, or terms such as climate change as well, sustainable farming. And we're going to unpack some of these terms today with Shelley Fuller, who is the program manager for WWF South Africa. She's going to be joining us in a few seconds and she'll be explaining her role and what her organization does. And we're obviously going to unpack tonight's topic with regards to soil health and regenerative agriculture. If you have any questions for our guests this evening, please feel free to ask and we will respond accordingly with regards to your needs. Continue to like, share and uh, tweet this podcast episode um, and let's get right into it and speak to Shelly. Thank you Shelly for joining us. How are you doing? Thanks Mabali for having me. Great, great. So um, WWF, uh, what I know about it is a cute little panda as its logo. Uh, tell us about the organization and what does it do? So WWF is not the wrestling federation but yes it's the worldwide fund for nature. And although our icon is a cute fluffy panda bear, um, we are basically involved in over 100 countries um, trying to conserve nature and create a future where people and nature can thrive. So in South Africa, that is about conserving a variety of different species, not only the iconic rhinos and elephants, but also natural habitat that appears between agricultural areas. And so that's where I come in. I, I run a program within our sustainable agriculture um, portfolio, and we work with fruit and wine farms um, in the Western Cape and the fruit farms obviously nationally. And we work with these farmers because they're the stewards of the land. You know, they're the ones that are in charge of the resources like the soil and the clean air and the, and the clean water. So that's really what we do. We try and work with them and recognize these farmers that are really doing, playing their part um, to mitigate climate change and to make nature um, still be around for future generations. Yeah, so you're saying you're working with uh, fruit and wine farmers down in the Eastern Cape, and those are long-term crops. How are those farmers farming sustainably, more so preserving the soils in which they're farming in? Yes, so we do run, we run uh, programs nationally, so, um, but in the Western Cape, we have a long-standing initiative with the wine industry. So that's the Conservation Champions Program here on my emblem with the Cape um, Sugarbird and the Protea. And, um, but of course, these farms, they're not only producing, um, they're not even only having vineyards and producing grapes for wine, they also have fruit and annual crops. Um, and so what they do in terms of their practices needs to be um, uh, adopted across all of their different crop types. And in terms of regenerative agriculture, it's a, it's a big word, it's, it's quite a technical topic, but basically it means you're restoring the soil particularly, you're restoring the land, you're putting back in more than you're using for your production. Uh, and that's really the trend that we, we, we're encouraging. It's, it's wonderful to see it's been adopted globally 
and the value of a healthy soil um, in terms of increasing your yield and therefore your businesses, but also in terms of uh, returning the function back to the soil. Because without soil, we will never have the food on our plates um, and we won't have a lot of the services that a healthy soil provides. If you think of, of water filtration, of uh, absorbing the water in, in the soil, it's, it, a healthy structural soil um, is the foundation of, of our survival, really. Yeah, you mentioned uh, when we're farming and so we have to put a lot more back in than we take out. So what are the some of the elements uh, or components required to make soil healthy? You know, typically we would think of um, using compost, you know, from, an, from a household mm -hmm. version, you put eggshells, you put banana peels, any type of waste from fruits and vegetables, let it decompose for a couple of days or a couple of weeks. And then from that, you can put back into the soil. How do farmers work uh, in this way, putting more back into the soil, especially at commercial level? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, uh, gone are the days where, where it was thought that kind of a bare, barren soil was a clean soil and, and the way to farm. I'm very grateful that, you know, um, we've seen the use, the adoption of cover crops. So as soon as you start covering the soil again, you are helping to return some of those functions back. Um, so a bare, barren soil will just be um, at risk for erosion. And so some of the aspects are to try and bring back that organic matter, so that humus, that compost, like you mentioned. Um, so starting off by sowing cover crops, a variety of different um, annual species, and then really actively, actively returning the soil carbon, um, the organic matter back into the soil. Um, and by doing that, you're actually obviously returning the nutrients and the, the life back to the soil, which means that you, you don't need those artificial fertilizers to get the same nutrients for your crops. It takes some time to, to return the life back to the soil after we've been you know, taking so much out. Um, and, and a sterile soil is, is obviously um, a long-term journey to, to return it back to something that's living. But yes, so it's adding the humus back in. Um, it's adding the nitrogen fixing that, that a lot of the cover crops and the, um, the legumes provide. Um, it's a lot easier in, in um, perennial um, crops like orchards and vineyards that you then you have a longer term cycle to bring that back in. Um, but we're also seeing, you know, with the annual crops, um, wheat and, and sugar cane, um, less plowing, a low tillage, um, really trying not to disturb the soil. So when you're trying to bring the life back in, you don't want to expose that to the sun and, the, and, and other natural elements. So it's, uh, it's, there's been incredible science and, and we, we're not the leaders. There are farmers out there um, le teaching us um, a lot of a lot to be done, but um, yeah, South African farming, the farming community is is always innovative and always trying to try new things, and especially living through droughts and and realizing how changing farming practices makes a huge difference on on that available resource, um, and also with the input costs being so expensive. You know, fertilizers are fossil fuel based, so. They go up when the diesel price goes up and, it, and it's becoming unaffordable. Uh, thankfully for us, the environmentalists, but it's becoming unaffordable to be just relying on, on agri agrochemicals to keep the soil and the crop healthy. Yeah, still on the topic on, of soil, Shelley, um, how does one determine whether or not they've got good soil? Does the color change? Uh, is there a difference in texture? Um, how does one know that you're actually farming in good soil as opposed to bad soil? So um, there's a variety of different aspects to the soil that you need to kind of assess. Um, so you look across the biology, the biological factors of the soil, how it feels and, and whether it's a clay kind of soil or a sandy soil. Um, so that's also the physical elements of it. And then the chemical aspects, that's usually what people take um, 
into a soil uh, assessment or through the lab. So I think the best way is really to, to, to take a sample and send it off to a lab where you can really see what the nutrient count is. Um, but also, I mean, you can smell and see and, and see if, the, if there's roots, if there's hojas, if there's worms, if there's life in the soil. Um, and most of the farms, I mean, this is, this is the starting point of their businesses. So they know what, what's at stake and they know their soil and their land very well. It's been going for generations. And you really can smell and feel and, and, and know whether there's still life in that soil. But to know exactly what you need to add back in you've got to measure it effectively. And so, so you do need some um, analyses to, to be able to do that. And, um, but yeah, we basically, we trying to promote the fact that um, you can't look at anything in isolation, uh, isolation. So never just the chemical aspects of the soil, but what is the structure? What is the physical side of the soil? Is it too sandy? Do you need to add a little bit more humus to make it um, uh, retain that nutrients and retain the water? And so, yeah, there's a number of different aspects, um, but it's about bringing that life back. Yeah, yeah. How exactly do you work with farmers in your program, right? The fruit and wine farmers. Um, are you teaching them about soil conservation or are you predominantly working with the farmers just to get research in terms of how are they farming? What innovative practices are they using? Or are you bringing their knowledge to the fore so that they can adopt in their farming practices? So maybe if you could just outline for us what exactly your the program that you're currently managing and overseeing, what exactly mm -hmm. does entail and how do you work with farmers on the ground? Okay, thank you. Um, so as WWF, we're a conservation organization. Um, but we realized that obviously uh, a lot of the land in, in South Africa that has uh, conservation value or is really important for biodiversity or really important for water security, for water sources, um, is in the hands of, of private and communally owned farmers. So um, we realized that we need to work in harmony with agriculture um, because it's the biggest impact on, on biodiversity. And, and we, agriculture is, is one of the largest water users as well. So obviously in a, in a country like South Africa, um, we need to be able to put food on the table and grow the economy, but also make sure that there's enough of those natural resources um, to sustain and allow that future growth. So, so we work across different industries. Um, so so my program is obviously fruit and wine um, and generally we work with the industry associations so we develop um, biodiversity guidelines or environmental standards that that the industry can adopt that are locally relevant and help them get access to market but but more than more than anything what what drives my passion is working on a one-on-one -on -one basis with a lot of these farms and learning from them what they've been doing as i say they're very innovative and and quite often it's it's connecting the research with the practical example and getting that information out there so we do try and share knowledge um develop resources that can be used and 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 opportunities like this is a wonderful example you know that there are there are always alternatives and there's, there's lessons that, that we can share to increase the adoption of regenerative practices um, and so that you unpack it a little bit. And then also just to recognize those farms that are leading the way. And so, for example, in the wine industry, um, the wine farms that sign up with us, they commit to adhering to very high levels of environmental um, conservation and the way they produce their wine is, is uh, in in harmony with nature as much as possible instead of fighting nature. And so, and then they're allowed to use the Sugar Bird logo on their wine to differentiate themselves in the market. So they're different mm -hmm. angles, but it, it really is trying to get the message out there, unpack it, the, you know, big science words that don't always make sense, but really provide practical examples and use the farmer's voices um, to be able to share that as well. Yeah. Do you think the market cares about how the farmers are producing their wine? Like you mentioned, you know, uh, if a farmer is using very conservative agricultural practices, they get that sugar bird sticker. Uh, do you think consumers even know what that sugar bird sticker is? Because they'll just be buying wine and, you know, they go home and drink with friends or something like that. So do you think the market 
really or consumer mm. yeah do you think the market or the consumer market really cares about regenerative agriculture and the way in which wine uh, or fruits were produced okay i i think the timing is right i think maybe 10 years ago south african market was was you know buying on price point only and and there's a lot of stickers out there there's a lot of labels um promoting organic and all sorts of things and so i think there is a role to inform the consumer. I think the trends these days, the consumers want to use their purchase power and want to be able to support, you know, be part of the solution of, of helping to conserve the planet. But uh, it's critical that we inform the consumers, that, that they know what the sugar bird and the protea means, that they can trust what that logo is on the product, because ultimately, obviously, price is a factor and you'll you'll choose what you know and what you what's familiar to you but if you're suddenly aware that that a wine farm that you've anyway enjoy their product is also part of the conservation program then you might tell friends and those friends might tell other friends and that's and that's how we we raise the awareness and i think it's really important because there are so many farms out there that are doing incredible work and and they really are taking it very seriously their role in terms of conserving the planet and providing um food for our tables and and really an important role in the economy as well for job security and and livelihoods so i think i think it's really critical that we are able to support these farmers and and kind of build the trust around that supply chain Absolutely. Well, it sounds amazing with the work that you're doing. And I guess it's always interesting to work with various farmers, you know, farming different commodities and just seeing the different things that they're doing on their farms to ensure that their farms are sustainable, you know, to um, keep their soil in good health. My last question for you, Shelley, before we let you go is, uh, because you work for a global organization, how do South African farmers compare to those of the rest of the world, especially when um, farming uh, or adopting new um, new innovative and farming practices like regenerative agriculture? That's a tricky question, but um, I appreciate it. So, I think um, I think because of the scale at which we operate, you know. Um, we're quite fortunate in that we've got that blend between large-scale commercial production and and many layers smaller than that and and i think linking those two is really important you know there's there's the huge um local market which is is quite informal and and how do we bring those farms in and recognize them because they're farming regeneratively you know um and then it's not only those big commercial farmers that are that are that are gaining the recognition and the market access so i think south african farms i mean we measure everything because um everything costs much you know so electricity is expensive for pumping your irrigation fertilizers are expensive um so we we unfortunately don't have a lot of fertile soil in south africa so we've got a long way to go to build that healthy soil back up again but there are farms that are doing it and seeing the returns and we're not talking only shifting to organic practices but we're just saying bringing back that life and making sure that you're able to produce enough crop to to make your business viable but you're not taking everything all the health out of the out of the system and um, so I would say South African farms can teach the world a lot of different different aspects of how we, I mean, we farm in such a biodiverse habitat, you know, in, in the Western Cape, the wine farms are in the same area as the Cape Floral Kingdom, which is the biodiversity hotspot in the world. And so, and, and a lot of our natural area in South Africa, there's farms right alongside it. So we are farming together with nature. Um, and I think that's really something that we should be proud of and we should celebrate and we should share those lessons um, so that we can get recognition and, and we can get more access in, in, in the international space. Awesome. Thank you so much for your time this evening, Shelley. Uh, I think the guests really appreciate it and I really appreciated the conversation. And uh, it's always interesting to see what other organizations are doing out there in the agricultural sector because we don't get to speak to individuals like yourselves, you know. Um, it's hard to access uh, professionals like yourselves because you're very busy. Uh, but yeah, it's it's been a blessing 
to hear you share some knowledge and also put us um, uh, put South African farmers on the forefront, you know, in comparison to those global farmers. And um, thank you also for unpacking the term regenerative agriculture in a very simple and uh, easy to understand type of way. Um, and yeah, all the best with the projects that you're running and keep supporting the farmers. And um, yeah, thank you for your time. Thank you for the opportunity, Mubali. Thanks very much. Take care. Thank you. That was uh, Shelley Fuller, the program manager of WWF South Africa. And our topic this evening was all about soil health and regenerative agriculture. We unpacked both of the terms and um, got to understand what Shelley does with the wine and fruit farmers in the Western Cape. Uh, if you missed this episode, you can catch it, catch it on YouTube, on our private property YouTube channel under the Farming Podcast playlist. Uh, continue to like, share and comment and please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Follow us on our social media the platforms and uh, send your suggestions on what topics you would like us to cover right here on the farming podcast that's it for me good night